All right. Well, how are you doing, Mr. Devon? Not too bad. Awesome. Well, um, this is just going to be a recorded uh, interview. There's something wrong with our servers, so we'll just do the interview recorded style and throw it online later. Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. Now, let's see here. First, I think I should ask, how did you get into voice acting, jumping right into it? <clears throat> jumping right in, wasting no time. Ah, uh, no, right? <laughs> um, well, I, uh, I was um, a little kid. <clears throat> I was about five or six years old. And my older brother used to do impersonations around the dinner table. And he used to do accents and stuff like that. And I would notice that when he would do a funny voice, people would uh, sit up and pay attention. And so one day I did it, and I stole his thunder. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> that was kind of the beginning of it. And then I just, you know, I was like every other kid. I was playing with my action figures and stuff and, and uh, giving them voices and accents, but I never really, never really thought it was anything beyond that. And I was just kind of screwing around with that stuff for fun uh, until I moved to Vancouver to be uh, a, a film director because I was in showbiz since ever. But... Uh, before I came to Vancouver, a, a colleague of mine said, uh, you should do voice work. And I didn't know what he was talking about. So I looked into it uh, with my agent out here. And uh, he basically said, oh, well, you have to be very, very, very talented. And very closed shop. And no one gets in and blah, 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 blah. But apparently I proved him wrong because uh, I've been doing it for 15 years. So oh, yeah, really? that's the very condensed version of the story. But yeah, basically. Very condensed. <laughs> so you said you moved to Vancouver. Uh, where did you start off? <clears throat> I grew up in Edmonton, which uh, for those of you in the States might not be so familiar with Canadian geography. It is uh, the, the province of Alberta, which is north of Montana. Oh, okay. Freezing cold weather there, isn't it? it the winters are not nice. The <laughs> summers can be swelteringly hot, but uh, the winters are certainly not nice, no. Hence, part of the reason why <laughs> I moved to the coast. <laughs> More Mediterranean weather, no. That's right, that's right. <clears throat> um, so then... Um, what did you, so you wanted to be a, uh, what did you say, producer or director? Uh, a film, uh, filmmaker. I was actually, um, yeah. uh, I, was, I was an actor, but I was also a director in the early 90s. And um, then I became a filmmaker in the mid-90s. And uh, back home in Edmonton, there wasn't a tremendous amount of support for it. So you had to go where the action was. And in those days, it was Vancouver. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came out here. And, um, you know, I did that for a while. And it was great. And I won awards and sold projects to television stations and all that kind of stuff. But... It was right around that time that I um, realized two things. One, that the voiceover world was pretty awesome and that they apparently wanted me to do it. And two, that making films is really hard work and I'm <laughs> really lazy. So that was that. <laughs> You're lazy too? <laughs> I know. It's, it's, a, it's a pandemic, man. I know. I'd rather just stand here and talk all day, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it always starts off with someone going, you should do voice work, you know. Uh, seems to be. It seems to be a common uh, thing that happens, yeah. Yeah, I've never really talked to anybody that goes, I've always wanted to be a voice actor and nobody told me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. So do you have uh, any formal schooling or a degree? I went to the University of Alberta um, where I took the drama program there, but that was heavily focused on theater. Uh, which is what I thought I was going to do. Uh, when I was growing up as an actor, I thought, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a Shakespearean actor, a classical actor, mm, yes. and trod the boards and hold skulls aloft, saying, thusly me thou thinkest. But it um, didn't work out that way. <laughs> um, now let's see here. Uh, man, I just forgot. Um, don't you just hate that. You said theater, uh, actor, okay, um... Well, damn. Uh, I'll just move on to my next question then. I'll remember yeah, it. Here. I'll come back to it. <clears throat> um, yes. Oh, for you, what is the most difficult part about voice acting? Uh, the most difficult part about voice acting? Um, getting the job. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, competition is obviously fierce but the good news is that in this community uh up here in Vancouver there's a very small group of us that that basically do all the work and so even when you don't get the job you you know who did and it's kind of okay you know like mm -hmm. it's 
it's it's never I never have a uh, a situation happen where I don't get the job and I'm like oh oh that Sam Vincent beat me again <laughs> oh I hate him or anything like that obviously I say oh but you know it's not it's not a question of I hate the guy it's, it's a question of oh I'll get the next one you know yeah um, so it's a it's a very friendly kind of environment which is which makes the difficult part of not getting the job a lot easier and it can also feel like you didn't get invited to the party you know. Yeah, sometimes it can certainly feel like that, but uh, again, you have to sort of look at it from a much broader perspective, yeah. and you have to look at your career as a whole, uh, and when I look at mine, I think, yeah, you know, they keep asking me to come back and play with them, so I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> All right now, I remember the question. Awesome. Uh, whenever you went from acting, physical, on-camera acting, to the voice acting, what, what uh, did you like about that transition, or what made it easy, <clears throat> or found easy? Well, I uh, <laughs> I was never a fan of the long days. I didn't do a tremendous amount of on-camera stuff uh, as an actor. Um, I did some of it, but uh, I just wasn't a fan of playing little tiny bit parts and having to wait around 16 hours to do it. And uh, it just was kind of dull to me. Uh, I wasn't really fascinated as an actor by the whole process. As a director, I was. You know, I was so I was you know always more interested in looking at the camera setups and stuff than, than anything else. But um, so for me, when I realized that I could make, you know, twice as much money in a tenth of the time with a bunch of people who are infinitely cooler, uh, <laughs> well, come on, that's a no-brainer there, you know. I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me see. Yeah, man, I mean, I, I can't believe how, just how friendly voice actors are. Compared to on camera, you know, on camera they're, oh, I'm so great, and then on, you know, voice actors are like, hey, buddy, do you want to come with us to lunch and we'll be cool, you know. Well, I think I think as much as that sort of stereotype holds true, I think it's it's probably be, because of a number of reasons. One is that uh, we're all weirdos in the voice world, for one thing, which makes it you know easier to get along with each other <laughs> because we don't for really sure. care about being labeled as weirdos. For sure. And the other thing is that in the on-camera world, there's a lot more competition, and also they're judged a lot more by what they look like, uh, you know, wh what parties they're at, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas we don't really have that kind of, you know, popularity contest going on in the same way. So, so I think that there's a lot more pressure on the on-camera actors in many ways than there is on us because we can just sort of. You know, we can we can hide away behind our silly little voices and our personas. We don't never have to worry about getting recognized walking down the street, for mm -hmm. example, which most of us seem to be pretty okay with. You know, like uh, for I know for myself, I don't want to speak for everybody that I work with, but I know for myself definitely, I enjoy the fame, but I enjoy the limited amount of fame. I enjoy mm -hmm. the fact that I can choose when I want to be famous. I can choose when I want to be recognized. Like if I go to a convention, for example. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, now it's, now it's time to be famous for a weekend. But it's not a day-to-day -day thing. And I think that has a lot to do with the mentality of a lot of on-camera actors because they're scrutinized so much based on their physicality as well as their, uh, their talents that, uh, you know, that can, that can have an effect. Yeah, and it's, it's like uh, we can't play like Igor because we don't look like him, but, you know, on camera... If you want to play, if you want to play Eagle or whatever, you can, you know, yeah. behind your voice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, we in the voice world, we're not constrained at all by our physical looks. We can, you know, for me, you know, in the morning, I'll play a talking dog, and then at noon, I'll play an eighty-five-year-old man, and then in the afternoon, a three-headed robot that destroys Tokyo. I mean, it's just there's no there's no physical constraint. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. All right. How did you find out about, or how did you get involved with My Little Pony? Was it just another job offer? Just another call? Oh, it seems that we've lost him. Let's see if we can get him back. All right. And we're there back. we are. Weird. <laughs> so where did I, where did I cut out? Uh, let's see here. Um, you were saying how the actors are more pressured and voice actors, we can be whoever we want because it doesn't matter what we look like. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> <laughs> you ended on a good point. Let's see here. Uh, so, yeah, what I was saying was, is uh, my next question was, uh, how did you find out about My Little Pony? Was it just another job? <clears throat> it was just another job. I um, I got involved as, as some guest star characters in the first season, and um, I, I had no idea that it uh, was about to explode in popularity, as we rarely are, you know, like we rarely do have a sense, oh, well, this is going to be a big show. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the times, the shows we think are going to be huge sort of uh, trundle off into obscurity, but... Um, it was just another show for me to work on, and and even in the second season when I came in and did some of my favorite characters, you know, uh, Iron Will was so much fun to play. Um, Fancy Pants, I just got nominated for an award for that one, which is kind of <laughs> wild. Uh, but they were just, again, they were just one-off things. They were just guest roles. I went in. It was just part of my work day. Go in, play this character. Okay, great. Moving on. And next thing I know, everybody from the Brony verse. Is is trying to get me to come to conventions to talk about it. So, <laughs> whatever you like, no problem. <laughs> so, so when did um, when did you find out about its popularity? Like you actually knew, whoa, this is actually pretty big. Um, when would that have been? I think about a year ago, maybe slightly less. Uh, I, I'm really not with it when it comes to pop culture of any sort. So I don't know what's going on, man. So, <laughs> and you know, like. People say, "Oh, but it's been huge for so long." Well, I don't know. I'm, I, 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 I couldn't. I don't pay attention to anything really. Um, so yeah, it was about a year ago, I guess, when I sort of, you know, a lot of my colleagues and friends were going off to these conventions, and I was like, "Oh, well, you know, I had done conventions for years, anime conventions mostly, mm. but um, no, these are specifically for My Little Pony." And I was like, "Really, My Little Pony is, and they're mm. men, they're middle-aged men who are really okay." Well, that's. Uh, not what I expected, but all right. <laughs> Party on. <laughs> all right. Um, so then, uh, so about the time you voiced Iron Will was about the time that you really realized that, whoa, this is, is big, or was it more after that? Yeah, I think when I came back to do Iron Will, I was aware of, of the popularity of the show. Um, uh, but again, because I don't really pay attention. <laughs> it, was just, it was just going in, oh, hooray, I got a job on My Little Pony, great. It's as great as getting a job on any other show. I didn't yeah. really think of the, you know, um, the whole fan base thing at the time. Um, so it's not like I went into do Iron Will going, oh, this is going to be a convention hit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> People are going to be quoting me after this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> didn't didn't really occur to me. So then, um, tell us a little bit of Fancy Pants. Uh, who he was? Uh, who who did you model him after? Uh, the the producers had requested Fancy Pants to be reminiscent of John Cleese, mm. and uh, so that was fairly easy for me because um, I'm rather good with the accents, you know. And uh, I'd been a, a John Cleese fan and a Monty Python fan since the late seventies. <laughs> as a kid, watching that stuff. And uh, so it was kind of cool when they said, yeah, they wanted to be sort of John Cleese. And I thought, okay, well, that'll be great because, you know, he's one of my favorite person to try and, you know, emulate as much as I can and, and went in there and had a good time and all was well. And next thing you know, they're giving me an award nomination for it. Very strange, very strange. <laughs> Quite. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, let's see here. And uh, what about Iron Will? Iron Will, the producers said uh, in the description of the character, they wanted... Like he was sort of, um, you know, he's a self-help speaker guy and they wanted someone really big with a big sound and they wanted him to kind of <laughs> be reminiscent of Jesse Ventura. <laughs> so that tipped it off. I mean, right there, it was easy to come up with someone who was really intense all the time. And uh, <laughs> so that was that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And now uh, what were some of the other uh, roles that you played other than those two? I played a character on My Little Pony called Hoity Toity, who I, I think he's been in a couple episodes. He's, uh, if I remember, <laughs> I think Hoity Toity was sort of a Thurston Howell kind of character. Yeah. Who was, you know, very, oh, we're just so, we're so upper class, it hurts. <laughs> uh, and uh, I played just a little, a little, it was a, not even really a character, it's just a, a voiceover of a, of an old film strip talking about the um, the cyclone power that the Pegasi use or something. Oh. <laughs> and, and, 
Yeah, and it was just, it wasn't even a character. You never see him. He's just a voiceover, and he just talks like he, you'd, you'd hear somebody in an old 1950s educational film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, if I'm, if I'm mistaken from listening to you and that, didn't you also do an elderly pony at one, oh, at one point? Oh, it's very likely. <laughs> <laughs> it's very likely. All right. Um, let's see here. Now, you, uh, like I said, uh, you do a podcast. Uh, yes. Well, just briefly, I said, uh, two seconds ago. But anyways, uh, you do a podcast. Would you like to promote yourself a little bit? Yeah, I, uh, I do a show called Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests, and it's been going now since about 2005 or six, I think. Uh, we've done about 35 episodes. I, I don't put them out very often these days because schedules are pretty hard to coordinate. But um, it's an internet talk show, and basically it's me interviewing my colleagues, and we talk about their history, and we talk about some of their favorite moments and how they got in the biz, and we take questions from fans, and we give advice, and uh, just have a grand old time. Um, so it's been going well. I've, I've got a lot more people listening now that I'm on Twitter, finally. See, told you, I'm a total Luddite, <laughs> so it took me, you know, I only joined Twitter about three months ago. So I'm a little late to the party, but... Um, I think a lot of people have found it about the podcast because of that, because uh, I get a lot more questions now coming in, uh, which is kind of cool, but we've got mm -hmm. listeners from all over the world, which is really great. I'll get questions from the Philippines or Germany or, you know, all over North America, obviously, or Australia. So that's been really cool. And our next guest is actually Andrea Libman, and she is going to be my guest uh, next week. I think next Wednesday we record the show. So that show should drop sometime towards the end of next week. And I think it's episode 35, so, yeah. Awesome. Now, for the people who are listening, I would like to say who he has interviewed that we would know. Uh, well, we, we know a lot of people, but uh, the people as far as My Little Pony goes, there's Tabitha St. Germain, there's Kathy Westlock, there's going to be Andrea Littman, like you just said, there's also Lee Tokar, and uh, Andrew Francis was just uh, a couple podcasts ago. That's right. Yeah, they've all done their time <laughs> my, in my particular prison. Those poor souls. <laughs> the poor, poor people, yes. Yeah, no, I've hit, uh, I've hit, I think, the majority of, of the big voice actors here in town. There's still some I'm getting to, uh, so it's not over yet. But uh, like Scott McNeil and Sam Vincent and uh, Brian Drummond and uh, Kelly Sheridan uh, all the Dobson brothers, um, uh, Ian Corlett, Terry Klassen, uh, d d uh, d endless amounts of people, Mer yeah. America, uh, Hendrix. So, yeah, the list goes on and on. I, uh, David Kay down in, in L.A., um, some American guys, uh, um, uh, Vic Mignogna, uh Kylie Bear, um, uh, who else have we done? Oh, James Arnold Taylor. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's it's been quite a swath of people that I've uh, cut my way through. So, but there's more to come. Definitely. So tune in. <laughs> and people, you can find that at trevordevall.com. Uh, yeah, that's correct, and that it's also correct. Um, available on iTunes, completely for free. Voice print with Trevor Deval and guests. Brilliant. Uh, let me see here. So, yes, uh, I believe that is all. Um, if you'd like to make any final words. Uh, I don't know. Um, I've just been announced that I'm going to be attending the Las Vegas uh, convention. Oh. Uh, yeah, February 22nd, I think. Uh, so that's kind of cool, going down with a bunch of people. Lee Togar, Peter New, Sam Vincent, Andrew Francis, Marika Hendricks. Uh, I think Nicole Oliver is going as well. Um, I think Andrea might be. Andrea Libin might be on that list too. So there's a whole whack of us. Mm -hmm. uh, John Delancey is going to be there. Uh, lots of people are going to be there. So that's going to be fun. I'm going to be there as well. I'm oh, can't excellent. wait. I'm yes. excited. No, of course I'm just one of the lowly attendees. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to come up and say hello at one of the panels or something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's going to be great, man. Just uh, so much. Uh, I've been talking to the people that run the convention. And, oh, there's so much that's happening. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a very active and eventful weekend. Now, uh, did you know that it is actually Nicole Oliver's birthday that weekend? Oh, that's right. Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. We're going to need to have to put on a birthday dinner for her. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just the cool people. But... Um, <laughs> Wait, uh, who's cool? 
Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, oh, any other conventions or uh, pro- projects? Uh, there's a few things in the, in the in the works right now. Uh, nothing 100% confirmed, so I don't want to spill the beans just yet. But uh, yeah, my my people are busy working on a few other appearances here and there. So I think that uh, I think I might do my share this year. I've been I'm on a bit of a hiatus from the convention circuit for a couple of years just because I've been so busy and I haven't been able to take the time to go and do it. And, and uh, it'll be nice to sort of get back out and, uh, and and see the people, you know. The people that adore you. Yes. Call you a god. Yes, a living god. <laughs> uh, finally. Um... Would you be willing to do a promo for the Party Rock Block as Fancy Pants? Yes, of course. Absolutely. The Party Rock bl- Block? Block, yes. Okay, what would you like me to say? Hmm, let me see. Um, hmm. If you'd all be, ever be so kind to listen in to the Party Rock Block hosted by Demos Fox, I'd be ever so appreciative. This is Fancy Pants and... I'm asking you all to tune in to the Party Rock Block, hosted by Demos Fox, a wonderful, wonderful pony himself. <laughs> Brilliant. Does that work? <laughs> yes, it works just fine. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> all right, man. Um, I believe that's it for the interview. Um, I'd like to thank you for spending your valuable time with us. No worries. My pleasure. Thanks for asking. Um, now you're on Twitter. Uh, I'll have to uh, tweet. I believe that's the term. Yes. Uh, tweet you the uh, the URL of the YouTube. Yeah. Yes, do. So you can uh, listen to the uh, to the dropped Skype call. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you in Vegas. Uh, see you later, man. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. That was Trevor Duvall. Fancy Pants, Iron Will, and a couple other awesome ones from My Little Pony. Thank you guys for listening in. Talk to you guys later.